Hello and welcome. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what to do with uh, unknown openings. When you get an opening and you're not familiar with it. Um, if you've seen uh, all my other videos, I go through the chess.com bots. And presently, I am at the Julia 1800. And I'm going to show all my good moves, bad moves, and uh, where I get kind of lost in the opening and how I recover from it. And uh, it does end after 59 moves. Um, I played the white pieces here, and I'll show you how we got into this position, and we'll get right to it. So, uh, computer said that I played at about an 85% rate, and my opponent, Julia1800, chess.com bot, played at 76%. So, uh, I start with the uh, King's Pawn E4 Classic. And uh, Julia responds with this. I have seen this several times, but I'm not real familiar with the opening. I checked with the computer uh, later, and uh, it's called the uh, Dura Gambit, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, so I'll spell it. It's D-U-R-A-S Gambit. And so this is kind of what I want to concentrate on this lesson today is I wasn't sure what to do, so I just stuck with the fundamentals, and that's what I did. So I took, and I'm very careful at this point because I'm not familiar with this opening. I just assume at 1800, uh, it's a very respectable ELO, I assume there's a trap somewhere. So I'm trying to watch out for it, and um, I'm going to have to research this opening a little bit. Um, so you can see that I just got developed a piece. I was like, okay, I'm just going to try to stick to what I know. Control the center, develop your pieces, get them working together. Um, so that's what I did. Computer says I should have got a pawn out of the way. Um, probably has something to do with getting this bishop opened up right away and getting this knight out here or even possibly putting the knight here after the bishop is out. So that does give some options. So, like I said, I confess this is uh, uncharted territories for me. So I just stuck to the basics and um, thought I would, you know, continue to. Because I'm, like, I'm going to lose this pawn eventually. So I'm not even going to try to defend it or anything else. Um, that's kind of my thing. Is I, I I felt like the, the computer was wanting me to try to defend that pawn, and I'm not going to. I just have it in my head that I'm going to lose it and. My king's going to be exposed here in this file, but so be it. That's what I'm going to do. Again, you know, I'm going to lose this pawn. Let's just keep it attacking, and then now it's finally finally gone. Okay, so let's keep moving with this. Uh, I did not like my, uh, in this position, I did not like my king being exposed like this. And so this also develops a piece. It's not much of a development. Okay, I confess, but it is a development. And it's these little things that can help you win a game. Um, sometimes people get stuck on a certain ELO. Uh, you know, say, I just can't get past it or whatever. I, I can't advance. You know, be honest with your games. Are you doing these little things? It's, it's a bunch of little advancements. Um, you know, again, here the computer says I made an inaccuracy. Okay, you know, hey, computer knows better than I do. But... Um, I'm not used to seeing this opening. This is new for me, so I'm just sticking to the basics. I'm trying to play very conservatively, and uh, I'm still mindful that there's a trap that I don't know about, so just trying to be very conservative. Um, so I am up two pawns, and I'm very excited about that. And so now, like I try to do with... Uh, Let's see, some of my games, or really, no, all of my games. I always try to be a little bit ahead in the middle of the game, and then I just whittle it down to a more manageable game to where I'm ahead just by a little bit. But that little bit makes all the difference in the world. So I was trying to take out that bishop there with my knight is what I was trying to do. Okay, let's keep this going. So um, I've got a defender here, defender here. And a defender here so um, uh, you know I thought I could uh, attack here so uh, and that's what I was trying to do um, 
Peter says, I should have just went ahead and took that bishop. I said, this was an excellent move, but the best move would have been for me to take that bishop. So, okay. Now here, the bishop is right back where it started. This is one thing that hurts people and myself, and I do this sometimes too. We look uh, a couple moves ago. This is where the bishop was. Okay. Okay, and we do some movements. And now it's right back to where it was. In the meantime, that allowed me to get my pawn out. I pushed my pawn up. So if you're going to get a piece out, just to retract it right back where it came from, be mindful of that. I mean, I know sometimes it happens and I do it too, but usually most chess games, if they're evenly matched, only last 42 moves or so. And if you get a piece out and then retract it right back where it came from, it's almost like, almost like sacrificing a turn, which can make all the difference in the world. Okay, so let's keep this game going. Um, trying to add some support to this pawn. Besides, I don't want my knight tied up just to defend this pawn. Uh, I want my knight to do other things that he was would be better equipped for. Having your knight tied up just to defend a pawn is uh, not a good thing. So now my I feel like my knight is free to move now thanks to this pawn protecting this. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Okay, and I did I did that exchange. So we're gonna see the exchange. There we go. Is because in the end game I said, hey, wait a minute. In the end game I could have two bishops, and my opponent has two knights. Um, the two bishops in the end game um, is better than the two knights. Um, at least for me, I, um, and I think uh, you know most people would probably agree with that. Um, just because they're long range officers. Uh, but if there is a lot of pawns on the board, then your knights can hop around a little better. Um, so, you know, it's personal preferences, um, but I'm going to take the two bishops. They can close in and uh, box in a king, you know, uh, a lot easier than, uh, I mean, look at all these uh, uh, diagonals that I own there. So, okay. So. Let's keep this game going. I don't want to make it too long of a video. Now, here I got 10 kinds of excited because I have an absolute pin on that queen. And um, I did get a little too excited. I temporarily forgot that this knight could come here. So I was like, ah, shoot. And yeah, that's what happens. So, um, but it was a forcing move. So my opponent, you got to remember about chess, it's like a yin and yang. You can't take something without giving something in return so I'm trying to make it to where I want to move where I want to go to set stuff up and make it to where my opponent is doing forcing moves so that they cannot get set up what they want to get set up so let's uh, keep this going attacking that rook and it's you know gonna move and sure enough there it goes okay so now I'm I have to be very careful. My king is boxed in. Um, one weakness, I'm trying to always evaluate the board, and the weakness I have is my king is boxed in. This is no good. So I thought we could do an exchange here, um, and we do. And there we go. But I still have to be very mindful. I'm hoping to pick up a knight for free, but, you know, at 1,800, Julia is not going to let that happen at 1,800, but thought I'd try. Okay, so... I still have to deal with this and be very careful of my king being boxed in because there is a rook on the board. Rooks are notorious for getting down here. If I don't have anything to defend it, it's mate. So I have to be very careful of that. Okay. So let's check, get that king moving. And I totally missed in the game that I owned all this. Should have came here and put the hammer down on that king. And uh, again, uh, what did I just say? You know, about forcing movements. I'm forcing my opponent to make moves that they don't want to make. That allows me to set up a little bit and my opponent not to. And that's what you want. So think about that. So the computer still says it was a good move, but definitely not the best. Uh, I missed that in the game. So, okay. So now do an exchange there and uh, bring my opponent back to check. Okay. And, um, so here I thought I'd just take the high ground. Computer says I should have, you know, kept working this. Um, okay. You know, 
Um, now that I have the king cut off here, as you can see, because of this rook, I thought I'd start attacking these two little pawns over here. Um, I do have it to where the knight cannot go here because of this. And this pawn is protected here. And so I've got uh, four pawns um, and on the queen side of the board, and my opponent only has three. So I thought, I'm in good shape. Let's start attacking these two over here. I'm going to try to get something to queen. And so, um, so here, I I saw the idea of pushing this pawn and then pushing this pawn, and then it's a fork. That was going to pick me up a free knight, or so I thought. The computer says it's a mistake because you know, look, Julia at 1800 is not going to let this happen. And so there I am messing about with something that's probably not going to happen and I need to be mindful of that. Um, I, I, I'm free to do this because this rook is protected by this bishop. So that allows me to a little more freedom to, to mess around like that. Okay, so here I did go into check that has to be dealt with. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to pick up this rook no matter what. But um, And then after the exchange, I wanted to, to leave the exchange threatening a piece. So uh, plus, I have a pawn now in my enemy's territory. Um, but I should have picked this up because what I missed in the game was I would have been barreling down on, on this pawn here. So I could have picked up, you know, a, a pawn right there. Maybe the knight, uh, let's go back and look at that. You know, maybe the knight does take this pawn, but then I'm taking this pawn if I would have took first. But that's not what I did. I missed that. So there's the check that basically goes nowhere. And so now I'm like, well, now I have to deal with that rook. So now there's the exchange. And, but it did work out decent because this has me pretty excited because I take that knight and there we go. So I love to mess up my opponent's pawn structure. Um, I think that's something that's overlooked quite a bit, but I love to mess up that pawn structure. So uh, for my opponent, not mine. <laughs> I like to keep my pawn structure intact. <laughs> I like to mess up my pawn, my opponent's pawn structure. Okay, and that can make all the difference in the end game, and that's what we're going to see here. So here, I'm trying to control. My king controls all these squares. I'm trying to, the king, my opponent's king, is going to try to get down here and start taking out some of my pawn. I don't know where Julia 1800 bot is going after, but I've got her closed off. So now I'm free to, you know, I got my sights on. Let's get something promoted. And I want to show you something here. Uh, there's probably some better way. Well, the computer says there's some better way. I do end up getting a promotion, but um, the computer says I could have done it better. Uh, it's not a mistake. It's an inaccuracy on my part. Um, but I'll just show you what I had in my head. And uh, let's go through it here. I did not want this pawn to come down here and then I retake um, I was afraid that I could just lose this pawn later on because the king uh, yeah it's got um, it's got to get around um, so anyway I'll show you what I had in mind um, and so I just kind of shut this down I did see that I could promote one of these to a queen so I just thought I'd push that and just shut down that area altogether. And so that's what I was trying to do there. I just, now I can leave this just as it is. That's fine. Now I'm free to concentrate on this area. I do have to be mindful that Julia is already on this side. So I would expect her to come over here and start taking out this pawn structure. Um, so, okay, let's keep it going. Um, and now she says, wait a minute, where are you going with that pawn? I'm not going to let that happen. So uh, she cannot retake with the king. And uh, she has to do something to get that pawn shut down. So we're going to see what happens here. So there she shut down this pawn now. If I just took, this would just be an exchange. And then I'd be in trouble. Um, I could maybe get out. I would just, it would be a race probably to... She's going to try to promote this pawn, and I'm going to try to promote that pawn. This pawn, her pawn's already in my territory, so 
the bright idea I had was to do exactly that right there. Okay, so let's keep it going. So she says, well, I'll promote too, but here's the problem. In this position, she needs to be on top of her, her pawn. Um, that's the key in this situation. When it's just a knight, or I'm sorry, a knight. When it's just a pawn and a king, you want to get on top of it. Now, I can't get on top of my pawn. I'd love for my king to be staying here, but I can't. But it's um, too far away that I don't have to worry about it anyway. So I do have to be very mindful of this. Um, so I'll show you how I dealt with that. Just keep pushing that pawn. And remember now, my king has blocked off Julia's king. So her king, I know that her king needs to be here on top of this pawn, and it isn't. So I know I'm safe to keep promoting, except for now I do have to deal with it because if this promotes, I'm in trouble. So the best way to deal with it is that king is still cut off. So now I'm free to promote and I do. Okay. And now I don't want, I'm trying to play very conservative here. 1800, very respectable. I've lost plenty of 1800, so I'm trying to be careful. Um, I want to protect that pawn. And so that's what I do. Now, this is 100% protected. You know, uh, these two pawns are protected by this pawn, and that pawn is protected by the queen. So now I'm free to clean house over here. Whoops. Um, and so that's what I do. I'm going after my second king now because Julia is, uh, she can't do anything other than just move her king around now. I am 100% safe. Now it's just a matter of time. Um, but I was able to get this position just by being a little bit ahead in the middle, middle game. If you remember, I was up two pawn and I was trying to mess up that pawn structure and I did. That is what gave me the advantage in the end game. And so I'm trying to use that. So, okay. So we want to make a, a small box for this king to not be able to escape. So... I saw this opportunity, so now I took it to where, you know, now it's just, these are the only places that king can go. So visualize this in your head. This is what you need to see. So the only thing uh, Julia can do is just hop around back and forth through here. Okay. So, and now she has to move. And these guys are stuck. So now be careful for a stalemate now when you're in this type of position because your opponent will be going for a stalemate. Okay. And there's mate because I own this and I own all of this and the king is completely boxed in. So Julia, 1800, very fun game, uh, 59 moves, a lot of fun. Um, I was pretty nervous in the beginning. Um, it's not too often I see that opening and there's definitely traps about. And um, so here's the big takeaway from this video is I wasn't familiar with that opening but I just stuck to the basics and uh, computer says I made a handful of inaccuracies and uh, I'm going to go back and look at that and try to strengthen up my opening for this. But um, this D-U-R-A-S Gambit Dura Gambit, my best attempt to draw. Um, so just when you, when that happens, stick to the basics, be mindful of tricks and just study the board and, Develop those pieces, get them to work together, mess up your opponent's pawn structure. Once you get a little bit ahead in the mid game, just keep whittling it down to a simpler game. Um, and if you're behind in a piece or something, don't exchange because that's probably what your opponent's going to try to do is exchange it out. So I hope that helps. And uh, please like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos where I go over mid games, in games and so on. So thank you so much and have a great day.